Blind cats, deaf cats, missing limbs, in all other ways compromised these poor, poor, defenseless animals. Stop it! Special needs, disabled cats, they don't deserve our pity. They deserve play. They deserve catification. They deserve everything that any other cat deserves because within every cat is the raw cat, all looking for the same thing. Hunt, catch, kill, eat. These cats don't pity themselves, so let's treat them that way and enrich their lives, and that is what we are going to talk about today. So if you have a special needs cat, or you know anybody who has one, then this, my friends, is the video for you. Okay, let's talk about blind cats. One thing to recognize is that with the loss of one sense in a cat, others will just come and compensate and become much more heightened. Think about, again, cats being prey animals, having to be on top of their game regardless of what is or what isn't working. And that's one of the things that's just so remarkable about cats. So to this end, we want to cater to those other senses, whether that is uh, their sense of smell or touch or their sense of hearing. So let's think about first activities. First thing, kind of low hanging here, is sound. Uh, toys that have a crinkly nature to them or have bells on them. And there's plenty of those types of toys where you can shake it and chuck it and, and they will follow that sound. So that's something to think about. But then there's the DIY part of this. Now for instance, here I've taken one of my uh, Jackson Galaxy Air Prey toys and just attached some bells to it. It, so that when you you know go to get their attention with it they have something to follow around the room with this toy we put in a little clicking mechanism when you start playing that clicking happens it signifies that it's game time so you have that and then with feather toys like this they are configured so that when you wave them through the air that sound of the wings is still there just Give them that chance to identify it, bat it around a little bit, and don't forget to pick up those toys after you're done to signify when it's playtime. Get them really excited about it so that they're not just walking around batting something randomly. So let's move on to their environment. And we want to sort of balance being able to keep them a little sane around your home and challenge them at the same time. In one sense, we do want to protect them and not just cause them undue stress. And that would come by constantly rearranging our furniture, which I've been guilty of in the past, creating unusual obstructions that they're just going to walk into and it'll disrupt their sense of what they've memorized. Now that we've done that part, now how do we enrich? How do we give them a sense of uh, what's over here? What can I move towards? Uh, what's exciting? Now, one of the first things that I love is when it comes to their water supply. Blind cats, fountains. Fountains are great. Uh, they make that noise. They have that bubbling sound or that falling sound attracting them to water. And of course, that also encourages your cats to drink at the same time. When it comes to their food bowls, again, keep it consistent. Don't be moving around their food bowls all over the place. Have a station where your cats eat. In catification, I talk about the concept of scent soakers and how important they are to all cats. They are markers because scent identification is one of the most key elements of a cat's life and their mojo, their confidence. So whether it's litter boxes or scratchers or beds or anything else that, that collects their scent, Put them in strategic places and don't skimp. As a matter of fact, you can put certain things against the walls to sort of say, there's a wall coming and there's something good here as well. And then don't forget, don't skimp on the litter boxes because the more they are, it's not just about where they pee or where they poop. It's about, I smell this, I smell me, I feel like I own this place. And that is just so important for these guys. So like I said, don't skimp on the scent soakers. One quick note on catification safety for blind cats. I, I think it's okay to have them encouraged on to slight inclines up onto things like beds or whatever, as long as there are some sort of guardrails. Again, this is not something that the industry caters to in any way, but you, you would have to DIY things. But something as simple as having, if you have a ramp, having a screening around it, just normal screen that you can tack to the side of a ramp, a little guardrail, so if they bump into it, they know, hey, I'm gonna fall off the side here, keep them safe. Now here is my favorite and my biggest sort of bonus blind cat uh, activity, clicker training. Sound, 
That's great. As you go through clicker training, you learn that this is a great sound, that something is following after that click if I do something. You can learn all about clicker training with this video up here. It gives you all of the basics. It's easy, it's fun. Now we're going to use treats that will also signify that your cat is doing something right. I love these treats. Uh, they're fantastic for a lot of different purposes. Wonderful for clicker training, but if you see the way they work with blind cats, so you rip off the top here. Now, when you give it a little bit of a squeeze, see how it comes? So that way, we're using our nose. There it is, I'm following it, and we can give a little lick lick. I'm not gonna do that, but your cat will. They, they love these things. But it teaches them a little bit of confidence based on being able to accomplish an action, getting a click and a treat as a reward. You can use any type of treats, by the way, with clicker training. The other great thing about something like, this is uh, these are freeze-dried treats that I really like a lot because they're nothing but meat, no filler, but if you give it a shake, that's also something where your cat will come to get it. There is no lose with this, and I would really encourage you to give it a try. Okay, now let's talk about deaf cats. So when it comes to deaf cats, play-wise, I mean, your deaf cat should absolutely be able to interact with any interactive toy, but you can still cater to the visual and to the olfactory. It's toys that light up, that blink, that do anything like that, that they can chase around on the floor. And then when it comes to smell, I mean, there is nothing wrong with kickers. We have kickers that are stuffed with catnip. This one here, besides being cute, is also stuffed with silver vine. Uh, any of those smells, also honeysuckle uh, or valerian root, which is a hyper strong smell that they will explore. Puzzle toys. Puzzle toys are amazing. Anything where your cat can have a reward, which is food, based on solving a puzzle, is amazing. Now there's a concept called nosing, and that, a lot of times that has in the past just been applied to dogs, using their nose and, and getting reward for it. No, 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 my friends. Cats can just as well uh, do nosing exercises. I love snuffle mats, and I've used them for a lot of things, but you can bury toys in there, and they're stationary, so it's not something that your cat has to chase, but they're in there trying to dig something out using their nose. Great for deaf cats, but I'll get into it later. Great for all other cats cats as well. Now let's talk about something that's really specialized when it comes to deaf cats and that's how you communicate with them. Light is our best friend in, in these uh, instances. So for instance if you're trying to get your cat's attention having something where you can turn the lights on and off. I had one friend who used to use that old trick the old clap on clap off that little thing. Clap on clap off the clapper. clapper. You clap, the lights turn off, and that's just some way, no matter where you're sitting, you get your cat's attention. Use body language or different sort of signals that you would see with human communication with those who are hard of hearing. And so for instance, just a for instance, uh, as we would use applause uh, for the hearing, we would use this for those who can't hear. So for instance, you have your cat come over, you lure them over with the smell of something, uh, you have them do a trick, like a high five or a spin or something like that. Always the same response. Let's just take that for instance. It always looks the same and then treat. And that repeated over and over again. This then means something, it means reward, it means approval. So really take your cues uh, from what you would see from communication with uh, people who are not hearing. Be really careful because you can very easily sneak up on a cat who can hear. So if you're walking up to your cat from behind them, just walk extra hard. Make those vibrations on the floor so that they recognize that something is coming from behind them. Think about the other way as well. If you are prone to playing your TV ultra loud, stereo with a lot of bottom end to it, it creates vibrations on the floor that can actually freak some animals out whether they are deaf or not. Just a little something to pay attention to. Finally, one note on catification for deaf cats. I really encourage you guys to use uh, Vertical World as much as you can because as much as they can't hear what's going on, they can see what's going on, and getting a real 360 of the world for a lot of these guys will just give them an extra amount of oomph, create what I call the confident wear, where, where they can survey the domain in a way that they just can't do with their ears, but they can do with their eyes. 
One last little note I want to give you about your deaf cat, and that is their vocalizations. Now, of course, um, not being able to hear themselves, their vocalizations will just be different. So just know your cat. <laughs> Okay, let's move on to CH. CH is short for cerebellar hypoplasia. Now that is a developmental problem in the center of the brain that deals with balance, which is the cerebellum. And think about it in terms of not being able to find the horizon. And that means that it can go anywhere from a slight wobble, and it's just, again, it's just having trouble finding balance, to really severe cases where they will just kind of flop over the scope of uh, CH in terms of it being mild to severe. It can be really marked. So when it comes to what I'm about to talk about, your CH cat might not be able to do some of the things that we're talking about, but I think the environmental fixes uh, can pertain to everybody. So one of those uh, tools that will help is, again, going back to this interactive toy. These can be used to drag around slowly in slow motion, making it disappear, just activating the raw cat. CH cat doesn't mean that they're lacking that inner need to hunt, catch, kill. And we just got to do it a little bit in slow motion. They will respond. And just because they might do it in an inelegant way, as far as you're concerned, doesn't mean they're not getting that satisfaction. So think about those interactive toys and how they can work with your CH cat. To that same end, let's go back to our friend the kicker. Because again, if we wake up that raw cat who wants to kill, then that all four paw wrap around and the biting, that's still gonna happen. That doesn't mean they have to walk in order to do it. This is something they can do on their sides. This is something they can do without much effort. So just present them with those types of toys. Now, speaking of that, we're back to our friends, the puzzle toys. Puzzle toys are just a fantastic tool for your CH cat. And I'll keep coming back to this because this works for so many of the special needs that we've been discussing. But with a stationary a puzzle toy, your cat is going to be able to focus in on something. And again, it doesn't matter whether they're standing or sitting or in a loaf position or even on their side sometimes, it'll still work. Another thing to look at are things that are marketed as slow feeders, like something like the Boredom Buster, which is billed as slow feeder and toy at the same time. And you're just putting food into these grooves here and they work it out. Again, it might not seem like much to you, but it's still occupying mind and body at the same time. And so puzzle toys are also a good bet. Now, when it comes to catification for your CH cat, because when I think about it, really, I think about safety first. And so when we're talking about vertical enhancement for your CH cat, depending on the severity of their condition, if the CH is severe, then I would say no to vertical uh, period. I mean, we can think about things like ramps, but again, only with, with really significant guardrails. Uh, if you wanna line that with carpet so it's not a smooth surface, that's okay. I don't see why you would have one square foot of that place that isn't carpeted. You don't want your CH cat having that extra challenge of slipping around. One other thing to think about when it comes to safety for your CH cat are baby gates. Uh, especially if you have stairs in the house or any place that you just don't want them to go, then just don't allow it. And so pet gates come in all shapes and sizes and I use them all the time uh, for different purposes. But for this purpose, stairs are probably going to be troublesome, again, depending on the severity of the CH. Now all the stuff I'm giving you for CH, man, this is such a personal topic depending on the cat who's in your life. So I will tell you this, there are plenty of DIY hacks that folks have used over the years. I mean, take this one for instance. This is a feeding station for a CH cat. It keeps them sturdy while they eat, which I think is amazing. You couple that with a raised bowl, but I think this is a great little hack. And now I wanna see yours. Send me videos of your CH cats and how they navigate the world and things that you've come up with that have really helped because not only will I use that in a future video, but you're spreading that information to folks who just don't know how to handle this, that just have brought a CH cat into their lives and are looking for the best possible world for them. Send those submissions in. Once again, there's the link.
And now we are on to our tripods. I know, you know, some of you guys hear us use the word tripods and you're like, ooh. We use that a lot in the rescue world because it is that kind of like way of diminishing it a little bit so that these cats get adopted. And plus it really, they adapt to losing a limb in the most incredible way. So if you haven't guessed by now, a tripod is a cat who's missing a limb. There you have it. Let's talk about the value. Again, it's not like I'm just like putting out an ad here for my interactive toys, because there's plenty of interactive toys out there, but this is just an example. Interactive toys are so important for anybody to speak to the raw cat and hunt, to dash after something, to pounce on it. However it is that they do it, all of those exercises build core strength and core strength is really important when you are having to compensate for not having all of your limbs. So again, it doesn't matter what it looks like. They don't have to look like this graceful, you know, antelope gliding through the grass. How, however they go for it and they catch it and kill it, that satisfaction of the raw cats there, confidence is built, mojo is built, the core is built, and it's all good. Like I said with CH cats, Everything should be carpeted. Tripods can jump up on surfaces uh, a lot of times just as good as any other cat. You would be shocked sometimes, but it's the jumping down part that becomes tricky. It's how your cat lands. If they don't have a way to sink their claws into something and stabilize themselves, then we got this thing happening, which again, the, the more pressure you're putting on those joints, uh, the harder it's going to be as these guys get older. So carpet, yes, carpet, carpet on the stairs, carpet everywhere. Carpet is our friend when it comes to our tripods. There you have it. Take a look at the catification angle <laughs> of ramps, of getting up onto things without having to jump on them and making sure that those ramps also are carpeted or have sort of a tacky surface to them. No slipping, no sliding, but access to the vertical world, which as I've said, is important. And accessing as much of the world as your cat can is such a great mojo booster, so make sure that you're also providing that for your tripod. So now I wanna talk about super seniors. Now you think to yourself, well is that special needs? With age comes undesirable change. Let me tell you all about that. It's almost like your warranty ran out and all of a sudden you're aching and getting up out of chairs and my knees hurt and uh, you know, all that stuff. But as you get into an age past, let's say 15, 16, the adapting that you have to make now resembles the changes that we would make for our other special needs cat friends that we've talked about already. We've done multiple videos on this channel about seniors. I will put links in the description. So if I'm scooting by uh, super seniors a little quickly, it's because I've talked about it in other videos. If we see that their visual acuity is starting to go, we start to concentrate on the nose and enriching through things like nosing, which is the snuffle mats or the puzzle toys. Uh, loose catnip, like ours right here, which I love very much, it's organic, will help if it's just sprinkled around the room and they just have to follow. The tube toys we were talking about before, the clicker training, it depends on your senior. One of the most common things is arthritis. So we do want to make sure that, uh, that we're starting to lower their play places. We're going to give them ramps to get up there. Again, we're going to carpet those ramps. We're going to give them small steps to get there. We're not going to just abandon ship. And that's just a really important thing. Just because they're old doesn't mean that they don't want enrichment of some sort. So don't just put everything on the floor, although there's nothing wrong with, again, lowering the center of their bed gravity, I guess is a way to put it. But try to gently encourage the same kind of challenges or enrichment that they had before. Just because a cat's old doesn't mean they wouldn't appreciate cat TV, right? Of course not. Also what you'll see with super seniors is a reduction in body mass itself. They're going to get thinner as they get older, which means they're gonna get colder a lot quicker. Heated beds are a really great thing and when it comes to catification for a super senior, any place where they can get heat is a really good thing. So there are beds uh, that have external heat sources, but it's a really low voltage mat that goes under the padding of a normal bed and it, you plug it in and man, they will go for that. The the other ones are beds that have a little layer of mylar under the surface, so they use a cat's body heat to warm them up. So those are especially great as well. And then there is the fact that all cats are sundials. 
They will follow the sun around your house. That is a jackpot space and we want to use it. And the last little bit here that uh, a lot of friends of mine have used with their super seniors, as well as a lot of other our special needs cats, again, whether CH, tripod, et cetera, depending on their needs, are strollers or backpacks. And we do sell our Jackson Galaxy backpack on the website, but these are great just to get them out, get some fresh air, be able to see the world, use their minds a little bit without having to potentially use their bodies. Finally, as your super senior gets older, and I'm talking about from mature to senior to super senior, absolutely play with your cat, play with your cat, play with your cat. Just go for shorter sessions with them. You, you're gonna notice it with their breathing. You might even notice that they don't even wanna run after anything anymore or really go after anything anymore. Just the visual is still play. It involves their mind. Just getting them up and using those limbs, just getting everything a little just lubed up as they move around is great for them. Just don't have high expectations anymore, but still do it. Okay, so hopefully I've given you guys uh, some tools for your special needs cats or those who are close to you. Don't pity your cat, play with your cat. Don't pity your cat, build for your cat. The raw cat is in every special needs cat. Let's bring it out and, and that makes for a great life for you and your cat as well. All right, don't forget, send me in your submissions of your life with a special needs cat. Uh, any of the things that we've discussed today or something different altogether, I wanna see them, I wanna talk about them, and I wanna share them with the rest of the cat-loving world. JacksonGalaxy.com forward slash submit. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and share with your friends because all those things make this channel tick. Until next time, my good friends, all light, all love, and all mojo to you.